So there is only one A-level biology paper left to go. And for AQA students, this is the one with the essay on. And that is worth 25 marks out of 78 marks on that paper. So I'm gonna be going through with you the common mistakes students make on the essay, which is why the UK average grade has never been over 15 out of 25. And in fact, it's normally closer to 12 or 13. So let's start with the key facts about the essay. As I said, it is worth 25 marks. It's on paper three, it's at the back, and you get a choice of two titles. You only have to write one. So 25 marks actually works out as just under 10% of your entire A-level grade. So the essay is incredibly important in terms of having a swing effect on whether it could boost your grade up or bring it down. And that's why I've got two key resources I wanna share with you in addition to what I'm going through in this session today. Number one is my essay workbook, which I introduced this year after having so many requests to have more help with planning and seeing student essays. So here is the workbook where I've gone through three titles, a potential plan, and not only that, actual students' responses to these essays with feedback on what was good and what they could have done to improve as well as an overall grade. So I'll link that in the description below. And if you want even more hands-on help, then join me the night before the exam at 5 p.m. in which I'm doing an hour live class all about the essay, planning some titles, doing some model paragraphs to get you ready for that exam. All of that I'll link in the description below. So next key fact about it is AQA recommend that you spend 40 to 45 minutes of the two hour exam writing the essay. And don't be tempted to spend less time than that because it is worth 10% of your grade. And if you run out of time and don't get to write four paragraphs, you're gonna lose 10 marks instantly. So those are the key facts. Now, if you want even more detail on exactly how to structure the essay, understanding the mark scheme, then I'll link my video here in which I go through all of that in detail. But what I'm focusing on this video is mistakes that students make, which is why the average grade has always been somewhere between 12 and 15. So number one is writing an introduction and conclusion. That is a huge mistake. There are no marks for it. The examiners report every year. They say how annoyed they are that students are still writing introductions and conclusions when they don't get marks. They're worth no marks at all and it's a waste of your time. I get that it might feel very strange to you if you do an essay subject to not have an introduction or a conclusion, but that is what they want and it will save you time. So just jump straight into your first topic. Number two is a big one and every year I say this and every year I get comments saying my teacher told me the opposite which is why I now when I tell you this comment provide you the proof from AQA that what I'm saying is what they are after and that is you do not have to link the paragraphs together. The reason there's this confusion is in the mark scheme it does say you need a series of interrelated topics or interrelated points I think it says and that has been misunderstood to mean what you write in the first paragraph you then have to have a connection to link it to the next one and then link it to the next. But what AQA actually mean by that point is each paragraph can be its own entity, but it has to be interrelated to the theme of the question. So you have to constantly link it back to what the theme is. So last year where we had the importance of membranes, you have to keep linking it back to the membrane, the membrane, why that membrane is important. That is what they mean by interrelated. And if you don't believe me, like I said, here is the email from AQA. So I emailed them basically saying, I teach my students students and people on YouTube that you only have to link to the theme of the question, not each paragraph. And here was the response that I got. For your essay query, I can reassure you that you are taking the correct approach by teaching your students to link each paragraph back to the theme, which is the importance of. This does not mean linking one paragraph to the next. So there we have it, straight from AQA. If your teacher has told you something different, that is not the case. This is straight from AQA. You do not have to link the paragraphs. And the reason I've included that as a essay mistake is you won't get marked down for doing it or lose any marks, but it might take you more time to consider links and therefore it's going to waste your time on something that you don't actually have to do. Mistake number three is not including A-level language. So in the mark scheme it says you haven't either reached A-level standard or it's superficial A-level and that normally means you haven't explained the A-level in comprehensive enough detail. So an example I like to give is enzymes because you learn enzymes at GCSE. So if you're talking about the active site, enzyme substrate complexes, lowering the activation energy, complementary shapes fitting together you knew all of that at GCSE so you need to make it A-level standard by talking about things you only learned at A-level as well 
so the induced fit model, which therefore explains how an enzyme lowers the activation energy. So you need to make sure, if you can, pick topics to write about that you only learn to A-level, and therefore you can't risk slipping into GCSE knowledge. Sometimes that's unavoidable, and you do need to pick a topic that you also learn to A-level, but really think carefully, are you including information that you've learned at A-level, and not just GCSE, and have you fully explained the key terms? That is what they're after, to be comprehensive A-level explanations. Number four is linking to the theme of the question. You have to link it to the theme of the question to get over 15 marks. And by linking to the theme of the question, as we saw from that email from AQA, they mean linking to the importance of. So the example I gave, the importance of membranes, which came up last year. If you were going to write about the Christi, which is the inner mitochondrial membrane, and talk about its role within aerobic respiration, you then need to say why that membrane is so important. And I do recommend that at least a third or a quarter of your paragraph is the importance of, and make it as explicit as possible. Literally say the importance of this membrane, yours won't be membranes again, but whatever it happens to be, the importance of, use the key term from the title, is, so you're really smacking the examiner in the face, letting them know exactly that you are linking to the theme of the question. As well as that, in your AO1, if it is about proteins controlling systems or if it is about receptors make sure that you keep referring to the protein controlling the process or the receptor so keep linking to the theme of the question in terms of what it is you're talking about and have at least a quarter of your paragraph explaining the importance of number five is relevance and you lose marks if you are irrelevant now that could be that you wrote about something that just doesn't link to the title at all or it could be that you have waffled so much you've gone off on a tangent and you're not being concise and therefore you have actually started to become irrelevant and no longer linked to the theme of the question. And this often happens with the higher scoring students or the AA star students because they have so much memory of the theory that they just don't know when to stop writing. So the way to try and avoid this is keep thinking, am I still literally linking to the theme of the question or have I now gone off on a tangent here and here and here and here? So if you are doing the importance of, then make sure you are given an example and sometimes the importance of does link to a different topic sometimes it's development of the same topic but you shouldn't be jumping between multiple different topics in your importance of and if you are you've become irrelevant another way to demonstrate this is if you have an example where it might link to photosynthesis or respiration you won't ever have to write about the entire process of photosynthesis or the entire every single stage of aerobic respiration only one part of that is likely to be relevant to the question so only talk about that part and that is absolutely fine that is what they want you to do just pick out the relevant parts of a process that link to the theme of the question and then the final mistake is not having four relevant topics Four counts as several, because in the mark scheme it says several topics included or something along those lines. And they've clarified four counts as several. But what AQ actually recommend is you write five or even six topics or paragraphs, whatever you want to call them. I personally think you might struggle to write six and it might deter from the overall quality of your entire essay. But five, potentially that is going to be possible. And the reason they recommend you write five is if you do write five and one of them is irrelevant, then you still at least have four relevant topics so you can get over 15 marks. Whereas if you only wrote four and one of them was irrelevant and you didn't realise, you now can't get over 15 marks. So that's why they recommend you write five just in case. Now if you do write five and one of them is irrelevant, then yes that does still affect your mark but you could still get in the 16 to 20 band because you would have four relevant topics and you're allowed one irrelevant paragraph to still get in that band. So it is better to write write five topics and one end up being irrelevant, then four and one's irrelevant and now you've only got three. So if you have time, go for the five. If you don't have time for five, you don't have time for five, but make sure they are four relevant topics. So those are the most common mistakes that students make, which now you know them, hopefully you can avoid them, which means you'll be able to get above that 15 marks. And as I said, if you do want even more help, either take a look at my workbook, which is linked in the description with plans and actual essay titles and 
and actual essays with feedback or join me live the night before the exam at 5 p.m. in which I'm going to be going through planning a whole range of different essay titles to get you ready for the exam. But for now, best of luck and don't forget to tune in the day before the exam for my final paper three advice video.